the manner in which the Holocaust began in Europe is the same happening in America, United States. Now, I wouldn't even attempt to say anything about that because, first of all, it's pleasant to persuade ourselves that the situation is different here. Nobody likes to think of a Holocaust, however. Secondly, who am I to make such predictions? You have to have all them Gödel, or maybe even an Obi. However, one thing is certain. We must learn from the errors of the past. It is certain that the Rishoyim of the Am Yisrael brought on the Holocaust. There's no question that the atheists who took over the schools in Poland, the Tauber schools, and the Yiddish schools, and the Chavitz Chaim in his last years issued one Kol Kere after another to warn the people. He said, your children are going lost. They're being raised as atheists, as enemies of the Torah. All over Poland, the Tauber schools were flourishing. And there were schools where people learned to hate the Torah, to despise from Jews. The Yiddish schools were even worse than the Talbot schools, because there, their God was Karl Marx. Socialism was their Torah. And this was spreading all over Poland. It was spreading like wildfire. If not for the Holocaust, who knows what would have happened to the Jewish people. The Bote Midrashim are closing down where once, as I explained, children had learned all day long and every synagogue was crowded with people. Now they emptied out after World War I. Instead of synagogues, you had reading rooms. And people used to come on Shabbos and weekday evenings in reading rooms and read the literature in Hebrew and Yiddish. And it was all anti-Torah literature. They used to have dances already in small towns. I myself saw dances in a small town of Lithuania, men and women dancing together in a private home. They had music, they had halutsim camps, where their youth, all, you know, all the youth between World War I and World War II, all the youth dreamed of going to Eretz Yisrael, except the Yiddish youth. And they had, outside the towns, camps, halutsim camps, they called Hachshara, they called it. Hachshara was a household world, word. And all the youth, every evening, sat in Hachshara till late at night, boys and girls together, and sang songs in Hebrew about going up to Eretz Yisrael and establishing kibbutzim, socialist kibbutzim, avodah, all in Karl Marx spirit. And May the 1st was a big festival there, and the youth was rapidly going lost. So we have to learn from that. We have to learn that the liberals, the atheists, the Rishoyim, are the most dangerous enemies of our people. We have to learn that to save the Jewish youth from the street, to take them out of the colleges and out of the cults where they're going lost, where they're going into the hands of our enemies, they're going into various kinds of denominations or other religions, we have to try to rescue them. That's our big job today. We have to build more yeshivas, more base yankees. We have to support with more money all those institutions. Of course, and number one, our children must be brought up with a staunch total spirit. We have to fight for our youth. That's our biggest problem today. And we should know that the liberals, the Jewish atheists, the people that are seducing America, that are causing America to become ruined with immorality and radicalism are, to a very big extent, the Jewish radicals. I don't want to mention any names here, but you read the newspapers, who are the ones in the city council who voted for gay rights? All Jews. Of course, we had some fine Jews who voted against gay rights, but there were also Italians, some gay and Irishmen, Catholics who voted against gay rights. But those the biggest fighters for gay rights were Jews. And that's a tragedy of the Jewish people. They're our enemies, these people. And certainly we have to learn the lesson. The Holocaust didn't come from nothing. It's a great falsehood. 
for people to think that the Jews in Europe were living a life of righteousness. And suddenly a Holocaust came. Oh, very far. I was there. Very far from the truth. I was present. I saw Shabbos morning, every Shabbos morning, when I first came, 1932. A bus left from Slobodka to come every half hour packed with Jews going to work. In 1938, when I left for, to come back to America, every five minutes a bus left for Covenant, packed with Jews going to work. I went to the harbor port in 1932 in Covenant in the summertime with a rabbi, a local rabbi, and we saw Jews climbing into steamboats, crowding into steamboats, Shabbos smoking, and driving, riding down the river to the vacation spots on Shabbos. Everything was breaking down rapidly. And you have to know the ones most responsible were the newspapers, the radical irreligious newspapers, the leaders of the secular Zionists, the Yiddishes, they were the ones who were in control of Jewish public opinion, and they were causing the Jewish public to slide down downhill rapidly towards destruction. And we have to learn from that that our big job is to fight back against this, whether in voting, we should vote only for conservative candidates. No more liberals, no more Democrats, only for conservative goyim. Italian goyim, if they're conservatives, we have to vote for them to stop the tide of immorality and radicalism. And we also must see that our Torah institutions spread their pace. We, have, we should bring in boys and girls from the street into the Botticnesis, into our homes, and make them come back to their heritage and become what they're supposed to be. Any other questions on any subject?